What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a brief overview of my wireless dump controller that I set up and installed. Uh, I'll walk you through kind of how you could do it yourself. It's installed already, unfortunately, in hindsight, right? I should have probably made a video yesterday before I installed it so I could show you all the cables disconnected, kind of what it looked like, what I had to do to get it set up, and then you know, the actual installation piece, but uh, I didn't do that. So you're gonna kind of just see the finished product and kind of show you how it is. If anybody has questions, make sure you post them in the comments and I'll try and answer them. Um, I'll also put a link in the description of the uh, winch remote. This thing's idling away. I'm so stoked to show everyone this. I did a short clip of this the other day, uh, if you watched, but this is so before I'd have to kind of go in here, pop the box open, get the controller out, but now I don't. So I'll go through a full overview of what I did. If anybody else is curious, um, I might wire up another one. So here's the remote. And I'm kind of anal when it comes to safety, security. So you'll notice, right? Nothing seems to be happening. Weird, right? Like. Why is that? Um, and that's just the safety feature that I've added because my only concern, the link will be in the description below, but this winch remote, wireless remote that I am using, it's only like 20 bucks. Uh, so I was a little worried quality control or maybe interference from other uh, frequencies that could potentially cause the dump to go up randomly when I'm driving or something. So. Uh, you know, while I'm not, I would be concerned, right, from a safety standpoint of like hitting somebody or like damaging somebody's property. I would be concerned is like if this tarp is down and it tries to go up, it's going to bend this bar and, and break it. Um, so that was one of the other concerns. So I added, this is just a switch. I don't know if you can see it or if you could see it right here on the outside. So all I have to do is hit that button and then... On the remote itself, if it focuses, it says out and in. So out is up. In is down. And that, you know, is, is pretty much it. There's another remote that I showed in the short that's a little bigger. It has an on off switch on the side. Uh, I like this one, it's small. It still has this little safety slide so you can't accidentally hit it but paired with the safety switch there's no way you know this is accidentally ever going to dump while i'm driving or anything because i physically have to get out and press that button the other thing i thought of was well maybe i wired it to my flashers so then i'd have to turn my flashers on my strobes first before it would allow me to you know dump it i could just see this being problematic right if i'm trying to do a nighttime drop and maybe the, the lights are in the way or just every time I go to the dump, right? I'd have to turn the lights on when I'm back there and it's it probably would get annoying to some people. So I figured I'd wire it up this way. All right. So before, right, like I said, I'd have to come in here, open the box up, which isn't really a pain, but then you're kind of stuck with your dump control. And I'll show everyone this now just because Right, up, it's working, down, works. So manual control, still there, still works. I didn't disconnect any of that. But basically, there's this wireless controller that I zip tied to a wire in here. Um, there's, let's see if I zoom in. This blue little wire, this is the antenna. Um, you got a red that goes to power which goes to my switch and then from the switch is or vice versa draws off of basically the power for the hydraulic pump um, you got a black for your ground this just goes over to a ground spot that I have and then this has two wires it has a white and a yellow these wires Basically, 
I daisy chained off. You can't see it just because I wrapped them in electrical tape just to keep it somewhat uh, watertight. Um, but underneath this, in each spot, is a diode. And what that does is it prevents the power from drawing back. So the problem you have with the wireless remotes is, so when you hit up, right, I, and this is up, would be this green or yellow wire um, and then green, green wire. So that goes to this solenoid up here, which opens up the valve and causes it to, you know, pump the hydraulic fluid the way that it needs to. So that needs to fire in order to open the solenoid. At the same time, you also need the pump to run. So there's another trigger that runs on the top, on my pump, it's on the top here, and it triggers it for the pump to actually run. It's just a, a voltage, a low voltage, it you know doesn't power the motor. You know, that's what these big, like two gauge ca cables are. It just triggers it to turn on. And then as soon as you stop pressing, right, the power stops sending, the motor shuts off, the solenoid closes. So there's two diodes in here. So no matter which one you hit, um, power doesn't back feed, you know, go down here, back feed up the other side and then open the other solenoid. Um, another way you could do this if you wanted to really is you could just run two connections. You know, I combined them into one cable. You could run off of each solenoid, right? You could run to the solenoid and then to your motor, to the solenoid, to the motor. That would work as well. Um, however, you know this this kind of simplifies it, so you only have one connection. It's really your choice, but that that's pretty much it. And then I just, I mean, I could mount this um, the remote piece, the wireless remote piece, to the side here. I just zip tied it to one of the wires, so hopefully it doesn't flop around as much. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You don't have to be a you know Bill Nye the Science Guy here to to wire this stuff up. The remotes themselves, I mean, it comes with the color-coded instructions to tell you what each wire does. It's just kind of making it work with your application. So this would work for, obviously mine's a, a bison, you know, roll-off trailer, but it would work for any standard dump trailer. Um, the solenoid connections and motor connections might be slightly different. They might be located somewhere else on your hydraulic pump. You would kind of have to backtrace those wires and try and figure out what each one did. And for me, I mean, the simplest way was I unplugged one, you know, hit up, hit down, up, oh, down's not opening, the motor's still running, you know, and, and just kind of trace the cables out that way. Um, that way I can make sure I didn't like reverse anything or fry anything. And then, you know, I, I hooked power to it just briefly for five seconds, hit the button to see if it went up and then said, okay, I think this is gonna work. And then kind of hardwired everything properly. But yeah, it, it's definitely, definitely doable. I mean, if you have questions, post them in the comments below. Just today I used it for the first time at the dump and it was actually pretty cool to have because normally I'm stuck in that front section and let me spin spin the camera around so I'm, I'm stuck in the front section here so i'll latch the door right fold the door open and latch it here and then i kind of sit here and watch as it goes up to make sure the latch holds and the door doesn't somehow swing open because i've i've had that happen before but today i was actually able to walk back just like i'm doing now stand back here watch it go up watch the stuff fall out of it which was pretty neat um and then on top of that same thing like once i went in i saw that i mean i could have just gotten the truck but i wanted to you know kind of watch from a different angle for once see what i'm missing out on and so i watched the dump got in pulled forward you know could see the stuff falling out still and then when it stopped you know i got out immediately started to dropped the back because I still have to shut the door. So got out. By the time I got to the back corner to grab the door, I mean, the can was already back in its 
normal level position. So I just shut the door, locked it, boom, in the truck and I'm going. One of the biggest pains for me dropping these off is once you drop the can, you disconnect the winch, but the rails are still like basically right into the, the rollers on, on the can. And I can't just pick it, pick the rails and set them back down because what happens well, it's going to hit the can, it's going to push the can back, um, depending on how close I am, I mean, and where the rails are, I mean, I could potentially hit the can and damage the can. So I usually always have to run into the truck, move it forward, you know, a few inches, put it in park, get back out. Then I can lower the hydraulics on it uh, for the lift and then put that stuff away, get in the truck, then start driving. Uh, where today, now I'm able to just, once the can's disc down, I disconnect the winch, wind that bag in, put it back where it goes in the, the, the little holder that it has, and then can literally get in the truck, move forward a little bit and hold the button, completely shut, you know, shut it down, um, and then just drive away. I could be you know, lowering it down as I'm driving at this point. I don't have to sit there and wait. Um, you know, if, if you are worried about safety, again, you could add one of those switches. I technically could stop, get out, hit the switch. If there's no can on it, uh, there's really no need to do that. Plus two, if there is a can, I usually put my DOT, the, the safety straps on the back to, to add two more points of, of contact. And in order to do that, you have to lower it anyway. So at that point, like I'm still outside, I have to wait for it to lower. Um, but you get where I'm going with it, right? It's just over time, that $20 is gonna pay for itself in time, probably within the first week of, of using it. Um, it. It's just amazing. I, I've had it for a while and I wired it up and I just haven't had the time to mess around with it and I was a little nervous, you know, what if I screw it up? What if I fry the pump? You know, now my trailer doesn't work and I'm rush I would have to rush and fix that. So I've been kind of holding off, but the the other day I'm like today's the day. I'm going to do it and I'm so happy I did because it is working awesome at this point. So appreciate everybody for tuning in. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already to stay up to date on future content. Post your comments below, link below in the description for purchases and I will catch you guys on the next one.